1 and liftoff of Discovery, hoisting harmony to the heavens. Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at Blue Origin's BE4 engine. Right now the space industry is full of different companies and agencies all working on new and ambitious projects for the future. Some of these projects are next generation launch vehicles trying to change how we access space. However, one of the most important parts of any new rocket are the engines providing thrust and power. For years now Blue Origin has been working to develop, test, and manufacture the BE-4 engine. In the last few weeks, both Blue Origin and ULA CEO Tori Bruno have provided more updates on the engine's progress and more. This includes recent tests, deliveries, and a better view of the engine's performance. All of which are vital to the future of multiple projects. Both New Glenn and Vulcan are expected to use these engines in the near future. However, rocket engines are extremely complex, and Blue Origin has had some complications throughout BE-4's development. Here I will go more in depth into some of the recent updates on the engine, what to expect in the future, and why the BE-4 is such a big deal for the future of many launches. The updates began with more test footage from Blue Origin. Specifically, on July 28 the company tweeted saying, deep throttling, fine-tuned, and rapid response engines are key to reusability. BE-4 steadily ran for over 256 seconds in this transient power level demo test, across varying mixture ratios and power levels between 45 and 100%. The exhaust plume length adjusts with power level. This included a video which not only highlighted the exhaust plume length, but also provided a graph of the power level throughout the test. Next, on the 29th Tori Bruno chipped in with a tweet mentioning, OK, you guys have all asked so nicely. Here is a picture of the freshly completed BE-4 flight engine number 1 for Vulcan's first flight, in the stand at Blue Origin's factory. This included an image of the finished engine standing vertically in the stand. In the comments of this tweet Tori responded to some people's questions and concerns. For example, someone made a comment about there being a lot of parts and wires. Tori responded by pointing out, yes, fully assembled, functional engines have to communicate with the avionics computer, carry electronic controllers that control mixture ratio, throttling, and TVC. AI telepathy and psychokinesis is not yet a thing. Lastly, someone asked how long until vehicle integration. Tori responded, a couple months. The next day on the 30th, Tori decided to share some more information on the engine. He first tweeted saying, wow, you guys really do like seeing rocket engines. Okay, flight engine 1, fully assembled, on the left. Number 2, almost done, on the right. This included an image with the two engines, the most noticeable difference between them was some missing wires and finishing touches on the engine on the right. Finally, later that same day, Tori tweeted one more time mentioning, off we go. Blue Origin first flight FE-1 engine off to Texas for a quick acceptance test firing, then on to the rocket factory indicator. This tweet provided three images that showcased the engine being moved off the stand and transported to a truck for delivery to the factory. In response to this tweet, someone asked why rocket engines are so complicated. Tori replied by saying, because putting 30 to 40 million horsepower through a lightweight machine that is smaller than a car is something of an engineering challenge. Now that we know more about some of the recent updates on BE-4, thanks to Blue Origin and Tori Bruno, we can take a closer look at the engine itself and the role it is expected to play in the near future. One of the reasons the speed of development, testing, and manufacturing of this engine has been so critical is because of its requirements. These requirements are United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket and Blue Origin's New Glenn. In this case, Vulcan has been a bigger concern as it has made a lot of very fast progress and is getting ready for a first launch not long from now. A launch which requires multiple BE-4 engines. Over the last few months, we have watched more progress on Vulcan, and the tweets which were highlighted earlier, also demonstrate the need for these engines. In addition, while New Glenn still has a lot of work prior to needing any engines, the time will come and BE-4 will need to be ready. Blue Origin describes BE-4 as the most powerful liquefied natural gas, LNG, fueled rocket engine ever developed. Using an oxygen-rich stage combustion cycle, B4 is capable of producing 2,400 kN, or 550,000 lbf, thrust with deep throttle capability. They go on to highlight that they chose LNG because it is highly efficient, low-cost, and widely available. Unlike kerosene, LNG can be used to self-pressurize its tank. Known as autogenous repressurization, this eliminates the need for costly and complex systems that draw on Earth's scarce helium reserves. LNG also possesses clean combustion characteristics even at low throttle, simplifying engine reuse, compared to kerosene fuels. In addition, BE-4 was designed from the beginning to be a medium-performing version of a high-performance architecture. It's a conscious design choice made to lower development risk while meeting performance, schedule, and reusability requirements. With their hardware-rich approach, multiple developmental units and redundant test stands enable a high test tempo and rapid learning. 
B4 is currently undergoing full-scale engine development testing at Blue Origins facilities in Van Horn, Texas. Full ray production will occur in their new engine manufacturing facility in Huntsville, Alabama. We saw some examples of this in tweets from the company only days ago. Focusing back on the rockets relying on these engines, 7 BE4 engines will power New Glenn's reusable booster, and 2 BE4 engines will drive the first stage of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan launch vehicle. To put time in perspective of these rockets, ULA is still targeting the first launch of Vulcan later this year. Blue Origin on the other hand, has pushed back its date as they continue to work on the launch vehicle. Starting with Vulcan, the rocket will use not only 2 BE4 engines, but also some additional propulsion methods. Vulcan integrates up to 6 Northrop Grumman Graphite Epoxy Motor GM, 63XL Solid Rocket Boosters SRBs. They are constructed out of a graphite epoxy composite with a throttle profile designed into the propellant grain. GM Solid supported the Delta II and Delta IV rockets, and the GM-63 variant will fly on ULA's Atlas V rocket prior to the first Vulcan launch. In addition, Vulcan will rely on two RL-10C engines to power a second stage. Logging an impressive record of nearly 400 successful flights and nearly 700 firings in space, RL-10 engines, manufactured by Aerojet Trocodyne, harness the power of high-energy liquid hydrogen. The RL-10 boasts a precision control system and restar capability to accurately place payloads into orbit. Together these different stages and engines are meant to change how ULA accesses space and provides for its future customers. You then have New Glenn which is a single configuration heavy lift launch vehicle, expected to carry people and payloads routinely to Earth orbit and beyond. Featuring a reusable first stage built for 25 missions, New Glenn is attempting to build a road to space. New Glenn's fully reusable first stage is designed for a minimum of 25 flights, making it competitive for a variety of launch markets. Civil, commercial, and national security customers can all find solutions in New Glenn's high-performance configuration. Blue Origin is also confident New Glenn will be a reliable cost-competitive system with high availability. The 7-meter fairing has two times the payload volume of any existing launch vehicle, which means more room for satellites, and the freedom to build in more capacity. New Glenn is also able to launch and land in 95% of weather conditions, making it a reliable option for payload customers. The flight profile starts with New Glenn lifting off from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral. Following stage separation, the first stage flies back to Earth and lands nearly 1,000 km downrange on a platform. The second stage engines ignite and the 7-meter fairing separates. The mission is complete when the payload is delivered safely to orbit. Finally, the company highlights that New Glenn, their orbital launch vehicle, is designed for operational reusability from the beginning. B4, one of the world's most powerful liquid oxygen slash liquefied natural gas engine, will enable New Glenn to launch payloads over 13 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit and 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit, all of which rely on the future of B4. Blue Origin has been busy working on every aspect of the B4 engine. Over the last few days, both the company and CEO of ULA Tori Bruno have provided updates on the engine and what to expect in the future. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.